So I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is the new ChatGPT desktop app that we got a demo of during the OpenAI Spring event is available for people to use. The bad news is it's currently only available on Mac. Typically I'm a PC guy, but I busted out my Mac to show you how to use this desktop app if you're on a Mac right now and wanna try it. Now, if you go to the regular app store and you search out chat GPT, you'll find a handful of apps here that are trying to fool you into thinking they're the official chat GPT app, but none of these are actually the chat GPT app. You can't find it in the app store just yet. So be very, very careful. They're trying to use very similar logos and they say things like built on OpenAI chat GPT or powered by chat GPT but none of these are the official app. They also mysteriously all have in-app purchases, which I don't know what that's about. So just avoid them. However, if we head on over to chatgpt.com, we'll log into our ChatGPT account. And then down at the bottom, you'll see this new box pop up. Now you won't see this if you log in using Windows, but if you're on a Mac, you will see this. Access ChatGPT from any screen with the new launcher, share screenshots and have voice conversations available for Mac OS, 14 plus with Apple Silicon. So you've got to have one of the M1, M2, M3 Max. Let's go ahead and click download. Then we'll go ahead and launch the installer here. Drag our chat GPT box into our applications. Now we should be good to go. So let me go ahead and fire up chat GPT. Go ahead and say we trust it. And now we can go ahead and sign into the app. So I'll go ahead and click the button to sign in here. And now I've got the app for ChatGPT installed on my Mac desktop. And if I hit option spacebar, it will actually launch this new launcher. So I'll go ahead and close this window. We'll minimize this. If I hit option spacebar, it brings up a little box. It looks similar to my spotlight box, but it allows me to message ChatGPT. I'll go ahead and minimize my Chrome window and let's open our ChatGPT box here. And I'm gonna use the prompt. What should I try when using the new ChatGPT desktop app? Our app pops up and we get a response just like we would from the normal chat GPT. I've got the options up here to change models, GPT 4.0. Right now it's using GPT 4. I'm gonna make sure I switch it to GPT 4.0, the best model here. <laughs> and let's go ahead and give it that same prompt. Some of this stuff it's saying, I'm not even sure if it's true or not. We'll have to test here. So enhanced interface, user-friendly design, take advantage of the streamlined and intuitive user interface, customizable layout. I don't know what I can customize about it. It's got the similar sidebar to what you'd get inside of the web app here. I could open or close that. And then we also notice that underneath our model options here, we can see all of the GPTs that we typically use. We also have the ability to turn on or off our temporary chat, sort of the incognito chat. We've got a button in the top right here to start a new chat, a paperclip to upload attachments, a microphone, which will translate our speaking into text, and then headphones, which work just like the mobile app. It doesn't have all of the cool her style features in it yet, where the voice sounds like a real person and you can change their emotions and energy and make them talk like robots and stuff. That's not in the app yet, but let's see what it recommended because I'm curious if these features are real or if it's hallucinating features of this new app. This claims it's got offline access, work without internet, utilize the offline mode to access and use chat GPT without an active internet connection. Local storage, save conversations and important data directly on your device for offline access. I don't know if these are true here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off Wi-Fi. I've got no internet now and I'm gonna say, does this really work without internet? Your most recent request failed, please retry. <laughs> yeah, I think when I asked it what this desktop app does, I don't think it knows. I don't think that information is trained into the data set yet because it is hallucinating that it will work in offline mode. Let's go ahead and turn on the internet again. And at this point, I'm assuming all of the features it told me here are probably not real. Let's go ahead and click retry, ask the same prompt now that our internet's back on. The chat GPT desktop app requires an internet connection to function. I'm gonna go ahead and start a new chat up here and I'll show you that this chat feature is still currently pretty much what you get on the mobile version. In fact, when I turn on this mode, it does even say new voice mode coming soon. We plan to launch a new voice mode with new GPT 4.0 capabilities in an alpha within chat GPT plus in the coming weeks. We'll let you know when you have access. So I'll go ahead and click, got it. I actually have a different mic set up to test this because I'm actually using two different computers right now to show off my Mac. Let's see how this works. 
Networks. What are the best YouTube channels to follow to stay up to date on the latest news in AI? Some of the best YouTube channels to stay updated on AI news include one, Two Minute Papers. They provide quick, digestible videos on the latest research papers in AI. Two, Lex Fridman, known for deep dives into AI and tech topics through interviews with leading experts. Those are some good options, but I think you forgot Matt Wolf. Absolutely. Matt Wolf is definitely a top resource for staying updated on AI news, especially for practical applications and in-depth tool reviews. Your content is a fantastic blend of accessibility and expertise, making it an essential channel for anyone interested in AI and tech advancements. So there you have it. It pretty much still sounds like what you're used to if you've used it on your mobile phone. Now, this app is also gonna have a feature where you can share your desktop and it will actually be able to see whatever's happening on your desktop. It's not there yet, but you can, you know, take a screenshot of your desktop. So I just took a screenshot here. I could just drop it right into my chat window and ask, what do you see on my desktop? And as you can see, it gave me a quick list of everything that's going on on my desktop, and it's pretty accurate. I can also do things like use any sort of drawing tool to mock up a website. Let's go ahead and mock something up really quick. I just made this stupid little <laughs> design real quick. Let's go ahead and screenshot this. I'll go ahead and just select this area here, and then I'll pull my screenshot into a new chat here and say, please code the website from the design provided. Make sure when you press the button, a joke pops up below the button. Let's see if it figures out the context and everything I'm asking for here. So it's writing the code now. I'll go ahead and copy the code that it generated and we'll paste it into a text window here, like so. And then I'm gonna save as a web page. I'm just gonna put it right on my desktop to keep things simple. And I'm just gonna call it test.html, like so. Click save. And when I open it up, <laughs> the arrow's pointing in the wrong direction, but it says Matt's fun fake website with the orange arrow and the blue button. And if I click on the button, why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. It made that off of that stupid little design that I just made right here. Only thing that was off about it was the arrow was pointed the wrong direction, which one more prompt and I would have fixed that. Now, again, unfortunately, it's only available on Mac with plans for it to be in Windows later this year. No real exact date on when we can expect it in Windows, but I imagine it's not too far off. It also get a lot more exciting once it has the newer voice features built in and the ability to actually watch your screen. But the app is available now for, well, some of us that can actually use it on a Mac. So I just want to make this quick video, share that with you, let you know that it's available to go and play with. And if you want to stay in the loop with all the latest AI news, latest AI tools, check out futuretools.io. That's where I curate all the coolest AI tools and news all in one place. I also have a free newsletter, join the free newsletter. And every month I'm going to be giving away cool gadgets and gear. This month I'm giving away an Insta360 X4. All you have to do is be subscribed to this YouTube channel and be subscribed to the newsletter. If you're subscribed in those two places, you're entered to win for now and all future months. So hopefully this was helpful. I know those of you that have Windows probably didn't find it that helpful, but those of you that have Macs are probably happy about this. And me being a mostly PC guy, most of the time, I'm also still kind of waiting on the PC version because that's where I'll get the most use out of it, but still kind of fun to play with and nice to have a little chat window open all the time that you can really just open up by pressing two buttons real quick. And now we've got a message chat GPT dialogue ready to go. So hopefully you found this helpful. I really, really appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in and checking out this quick tip. I got a lot more cool videos on the way over the coming weeks with all these big announcements coming out from a lot of big companies. So make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. And once again, really appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.